talk to me a little more about coffee. And, yeah, because this is obviously you know, very a very commonly consumed beverage. Yeah, uh, one of the most commonly consumed beverages in the world. Uh, and you mentioned caffeine. I'm interested. I, I think from listening to you, you try and push back any caffeine consumption in the sort of you try and avoid it. I should say in the first sort of sixty to ninety minutes of the day. Can yeah. you can you kind of talk to the importance of that? Yeah. So uh, caffeine and we can talk about coffee specifically, but caffeine generally, so whether or not it's from tea or from coffee or from, uh, I'm a big yerba mate fan. I think this, I think you got the, I think you got the black, you know, we're both drinking this. Um, this is not my podcast sponsor, but someone from Peak Teas sent us this, um, uh, what is it? It's like a pure, I like these fermented mm. teas, these pure rare teas. It reminds me of, yeah. of China. Uh, I've, I've yeah, had several chips. Very trips smooth, there. not tannic. I really yeah. like it. Again, not a sponsor, not promoting them, but the tea is really nice. Um, but it has caffeine. So what's caffeine doing? Caffeine is causing the liberation of adrenaline from your adrenals, these two little marble-sized glands above your kidneys. That tends to activate the so-called sympathetic nervous system, make you a little bit more prone to move, um, bring some alertness to your body, if you, uh, so to speak. And then you simultaneously, it's causing the release of norepinephrine and epinephrine from this little cluster of neurons called locus ceruleus that we talked about before. So the brain is being hosed with a little bit of epinephrine as we speak right now. In addition, it's triggering a, a dopamine increase, but not by triggering the release of dopamine directly. Caffeine increases the sensitivity of dopamine receptors. So whatever dopamine is floating around in your system and my system, the caffeine is amplifying that effect, not necessarily in, by making it a longer effect, by making the intensity a little bit higher. The other thing that um, caffeine does, and this is perhaps the most important one, is that it effectively prevents the action of a molecule called adenosine. Adenosine is a molecule that builds up the longer that you are awake. And then when you sleep, adenosine gets pushed back down to a minimal level. Adenosine essentially is a readout of fatigue overall. So if we were to stay up for two days, adenosine levels would be very high. So in terms of a practical tool, I do try and restrict my caffeine intake or at least most of it to the early part of the day. I'll stop drinking caffeine sometimes, usually around 3 or 4 p.m. I don't drink any high amount of caffeine after 4 p.m. and generally not coffee. But when you wake up in the morning, depending on how well and how long you slept, your levels of adenosine might be zeroed out and you feel really alert, or you might have a, a small amount of adenosine hanging around. If you drink caffeine right away, what happens is caffeine acts as what's called a competitive uh, it, it, well, let, let's just keep it simple. It essentially binds to the receptor that, that adenosine would normally it's occupy. It's an antagonist. It, it's, it's a functionally, it's an antagonist, but it's what we call a competitive agonist because it binds, it binds. So it's an agonist, but it, com, it outcompetes the adenosine. So the adenosine can't dock at those receptors. So that's great because you start to wake up, but then around two or 3 PM, as that caffeine wears off, the adenosine that's still around binds to those receptors and you get the afternoon crash. So one way that you can avoid the, the afternoon crash, or at least uh, offset uh, quite a bit of it, is to wait 90 to 120 minutes after you wake up to ingest any caffeine. And so adenosine uh, lowers. Adenosine will continue to be cleared from your system in the early mm. part of the day. And there's an also, now it appears to be a, what I think is an interesting effect of exercise early in the day, close to waking. So in the first three hours of waking, will also help clear adenosine. Okay. So this is why so I want to flush this out of the system. Yeah. And this is why I think, um, you know, for me personally, I don't, I don't, the best time to work out for me would be late mid morning. I'm a bit of a lazy bear in the morning, but what I find is every time I work out early in the day, I have more energy all day long and I never know why that is. 